Belfast for semi-finals day here at the Northern Ireland Open and what a match we've got coming up for you this afternoon. With eight world titles between them and a history of some epic matches over the years, two of the game's greats go head-to-head -head over the best of 11 frames for a place in tomorrow's final. It really does have all the makings of another classic. We've had some real battles. Sometimes he's bashed me up and played absolutely unbelievable. Other times we've had a lot of close matches. There it is. And Ronnie immediately offers the handshake. When he kind of beat me in a few finals, everyone's going, ah, oh, see, this is what you do against Ronnie. Ronnie There's the concession. Ronnie O'Sullivan is still the man. You don't really have many weaknesses. He scores as well as anybody. What a clearance this is. O'Sullivan is one of the few players capable of clearing the table as he's just done. We're very different players. Each brings their own assets to the table. It's there. Mark Selby, the jester, has the last laugh. A bit like a game of chess, really. Who can outthink, outfox the other one? Mark Selby confirms himself as a modern great. He wins a second UK Championship title. He's never beaten. He's now obviously the most complete player. That's what I practice for. Put all the hours in, you know, to play the best players. If you don't bring your A game, you're going home. Hello, good to see you again. It really does have all the makings of an absolute classic. Two of the games, greats go head to head in about 15 minutes' time, and of course, you'll see it all here uninterrupted. You won't miss a ball. Talking of greats, I've got two of the very best alongside me in the world with Jimmy White and former world number three, Neil Foles. Um, lads, I'm so excited. Listen, we all love snooker, but we all sort of love it a little bit more when we get a match like this this afternoon. Tremendous match. Um, it's strange how this they've not played for a while. You know, all of the success that both players have enjoyed. You know, Selby's won a lot, especially in China in the last 18 months. Um, and Ronnie's been winning quite a bit as well, as we know. But for some reason, they haven't locked horns. So they are the two best players in the world, I think. So we can expect a great game of snooker. And listen, Jim, it's always nice to have two greats going head to head. But it's even nicer when we know they're playing a fantastic blend and breed of snooker. They've both been producing brilliant form over the last few days. Absolutely. You know, it's like Djokovic and Federer. You know, the two best players, um, both on form. Ronnie's just won the champion of champions. Selby this week looks like he's scoring heavier, playing a lot quicker. You know, this, this match is what we, mm. you know, watch, watch snooker for. And uh, I, I can't, you know, they make Ronnie slight favourite. I, I think it's completely evens. Yeah, Neil, he makes a good point with regards to rivalries. That's what sport is effectively built on. And it's not just their playing styles, but their personalities away from the table as well. Yeah, I mean, we've called, like, um, O'Sullivan against uh, John Higgins a rival. Of course that is, but they grew up together. These two from different generations. You know, Sullivan looks as youthful around the table as ever, but Selby is the world number one. So mm. it's a tremendous matchup, you know, and it's hard, like Jimmy says, I mean, Jimmy always thinks that Ronnie will win. He thinks it's even, so it must be mm. even. <laughs> it must be indeed. Uh, a quick reminder, of course, that we have another semi-final tonight. That's between Ed and Sharaf and uh, Judd Trump. And we should just quickly talk about what an achievement it's been, it's been for Ed. Because before he played yesterday, we said he'd never got to the last eight. Now, of course, he's never got to the last four. He was 4-1 down against Ebden, came back to win 5-4 with a fantastic clearance. That was on the Eurosport player last night. Brilliant performance from him. He did really well. And, you know, I think Peter Ebden might have got himself at it a little bit, you know, before the interval, dropped his cue and all that. And, he t you know, finding reasons to be upset with people in the audience. Well, he, if you want to find things, you can find them. Mm -hmm. In the end, the inexperienced player came through the game and he looked more equipped to deal with it, I thought. Yeah, OK. Uh, the game we're going to concentrate, of course, is between two of the game's greats. We've been talking about their rivalry and what it means to us. Let's find out exactly what it means to them. I think that was the first time I'd got as far as I did in the, in the UK Championships. Eight all, fancied if I got a chance myself, I'd win the frame, but uh, Ronnie does what he does best, you know. He's probably only one of the few people to, to be able to do that, make a one four seven in a deciding frame when the pressure's as hard as what it is. Yeah! Unbelievable last frame, you know, to make a maxi in a semi-final, final frame of the UK Championships. It's a, a big one for me, you know. I remember I was 9-6 behind and managed to come back and win. 
10 9 made a good break in the deciding frame. It hurts anywhere you lose, you know, it doesn't matter that it's in London. To beat Ronnie in any tournament is fantastic, but to beat him in a major final is even better. It was probably one of her best matches, you know. I actually enjoyed that match as much as probably the most enjoyable match I had against Mark. Okay, I think there was, at one stage, towards the end of the match, five centuries in six frames. I thought I was back in the game, you know. I was playing really well, and then he played just three really, really good last frames. I didn't really do a lot wrong. And Ronnie's played unbelievable to come back, and I was sitting there thinking, if he carries on playing like this, I've not really done that much wrong. Sometimes you just have to hold your hands up and say, well played. But I managed to get a chance and held myself together. They were very different players, um, um, but you know each brings their own sort of assets to to the table, and it's a bit like a game of chess, really. Who can out think out fox the other one and impose their game onto the opponent, and and that's all you can do. Well, I just think you have to just go out there and just play the top of your game, you know, because you don't really have many weaknesses. People used to say years ago that his safety sort of lets him down, but you look at his safety play; it's as good as anybody's in the world, and. Obviously, he scores as well as anybody, probably playing as good as ever now at the, at the age of 42, 43. So, uh, yeah, if you don't bring your A game, you're going home. Yeah, Ronnie calls him the torturer. And uh, as you can see, they have had some fantastic meetings between them. Uh, it's 13 to O'Sullivan, 9 to Selby. Although the last two finals, as you can see, they've been in both won by Mark Selby. Uh, Neil, just what makes him so tough to beat? We often hear the word granite in snooker, and of course we use it a lot with Mark Selby. Why is he so tough to beat? I think he plays a very correct game. You know, he does. He's not a risk taker. He's a big percentage player. He's got a great tactical game, um, and he scores. I mean, I don't know that he's been scoring as well as you can in the last 18 months. I've had what concerns about his form for a while now. You know, since he became world champion in the UK, he's hardly done anything. This is the best he's achieved by a mile. Mm. Um, when he's in China, he seems to be the, the most willing to be there, you know, of all the British players. Um, he's, just a, he's just a very tough nut to crack, you know, I think that's the best way to describe him. Mm. Uh, what do you make of his week, Jimmy? I think it's fair to say his, his biggest and best test came in his last match against Tep Chai, but he's been playing solid snooker and quite quick snooker as well at the beginning of the week. Yeah, you know, he, he said before to us that he's, you know, the first shot he sees is the first shot he's playing, so his shot time has, has, has gone a lot quicker. And uh, he has scored really heavy all week for me. You know, I still think, I still think uh, Trump's playing the best out of all of them at the mm. moment. But I just think that Selby with O'Sullivan, you know, he doesn't play any wrong shots. Selby, he doesn't take any liberties with the game. You mm. know, he had a chance for one four seven in one of his matches when he was three new up, played the right shot, just won the frame. So, you know, he doesn't do anything wrong. But obviously, if Ron plays his A game, Ron wins. Uh, Neil, I get the impression that no one apart from Mark Selby likes playing O'Sullivan. Why does Selby like playing him? I'm not sure he does, does he? I mean, uh, even then, he's had a few hidings off of Ronnie. I mean, there was a little spell in, in 2016 at the beginning where Ronnie beat him a couple of times. You know, in the Masters, he beat him and he beat him in uh, the Welsh. I suppose he just he just worries about his own game. I don't think anyone likes playing O'Sullivan, to be honest with you, but some are more willing to accept it than others. Yeah. I don't think you get world number one worrying about your opponent. No. You know, I think... Um, you know, Selby's like uh, always ready to play O'Sullivan. He's got, you know, he's only, he's 13 9 to Ronnie in head to head, so it's pretty close. And Selby is a bit younger than O'Sullivan, so um, you know, you don't become number one yeah. in the world worrying about who you're playing. No. Uh, I have some breaking news to tell you about, and that breaking news is that Ronnie O'Sullivan is on the practice table. Uh, and I say this because this is genuinely the first time he has been on the practice table all week. Uh, Neil and Jimmy will confirm this. Every time he's had a match, he's turned up five minutes before, and the first time he struck a ball is on the match table. But, Neil, he's come in, and he feels he needs to, uh, to have maybe 10, 20 minutes on the practice table before he goes out there this afternoon. What does that tell you? Well, I mean, obviously, you, you, you have to tick over really with, with a bit of practice. But, you know, as far as how much he needs practice, I shouldn't think he does, really. I mean, he's played all of last week in the Champion of Champions. I say all of last week. It was actually over three, three of mm. the days he played on. And he won that, so he, he doesn't really need the practice. But it's fine tuning, isn't it, that he probably needs. Look, he's not going to want to. He's not going to want to lose to to Mark Selby. He's and, got, and that's the game, isn't it? He's got a table in his suite in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> the fact he's got a suite in the hotel is surprised as well. I noticed as well on that that we showed him practicing uh, Selby on the other table, two tables down, constantly looking over. But O'Sullivan doesn't look back. Does that mean anything? 
Um, I, th I think Selv is just observant, you know, of everything that's going on around him. He don't you know. miss a trick, does he? No, he's, he's, he's all over everything, Selby. And, um, you know, it's I'm pleased to see Ronnie practising because I think he knows he's got to practise to win this match because, you know, mm -hmm. Mark Selby's too good. Uh, and Neil, what have you made of Ronnie's mood this week? Because, of course, we've seen him away from the table, but at the table we've seen frustration creep into his game a few times. He's missed a ball that perhaps he would have thought he would have got. And you see him banging the table and looking down, getting annoyed. What does that tell you about him? Well, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he really wants to win. I mean, he's, I think in general he's played very well this week. There's been a few frustrating moments. That was against Zhe Yu Long, you know, and he played well. Um, but here he, you can see he's absolutely, I've not seen him so disappointed about missing. See, yeah, I, you know, I'm with Neil. That's because he wants to win and he's disappointed. But these sort of misses are because he's not putting in that half an hour, an hour of practice. You know, all, before the champion of champions, make no mistake, he'd have played many hours each day. Mm. He might say different, but I think he has. And then when he's come here, he hasn't he hasn't practiced much. Them sort of balls he's missing there is because he hasn't put the practice in here. Selby wouldn't be missing balls like that because he put the work in. And just quickly as well, um, uh, a lot of the players have spoken about the table this week being a bit heavy, the match table, new cushions, new cloth. What will that mean to the game, Neil? I think the table has become heavy. I think it was really nice at the start of the week and now they've got a brand new cloth. So there should be no excuse conditions-wise. It should be absolutely uh, tip-top for today. OK, the waiting is nearly over when we come back. It's O'Sullivan against the world number one, Mark Sell. We'll see you in a moment. Good afternoon, a very warm welcome to the Bet Victor Northern Ireland Open here at the waterfront in Belfast. <laughs> the best of 11 frames and this crowd are ready so let's welcome out the players we begin with a man who won last week's champion of champions the five-time champion of the world the rocket ronnie o'sullivan <laughs> opponent, the world number one, and the three-time champion of the world, the jester from Leicester, Mark Selby. <laughs> in the final awaits between two of the game's greats. Let's join our boys in the box. Neil Folds is alongside Thank David the Henry. first frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. This is what you call a proper snooker match. Ronnie O'Sullivan against Mark Selby for a place in the final of the Northern Ireland Open. Many matches to recall between these two. 13-9 on the head tear to O'Sullivan. But uh, all of Selby's wins have come <laughs> quarterfinals or later of tournaments, including five finals... O'Sullivan's won in three finals. Settle back and enjoy it. It's going to be, I'm sure, a match that lives up to the billing. <laughs> Not a bad start for Selby. Had a tremendous nudge, actually. He was brave in playing the pot, but he got a terrific result to be on the black perfectly. Yeah, I expect it to be a very interesting match, quite revealing as to where these players are at with their own games. Tremendous pot, which he felt forced into, but the little nudge was, well, that was it extra special. Well, we've seen a few players this week overawed by playing O'Sullivan. Mark Selby is not going to be. Far from it, actually. Nine. Just finished in between here on his next colour. You know, the blue is one of those you could play down the bottom or cut it into the middle. Not, not guaranteed here. Oh, well played. They're not the easiest shots sometimes. Didn't go in cleanly, but it 
found a way in. The table's been recovered. 40. Since last night, they're likely to fall in off the jaws a little bit more than they were. Fifty. Yeah, thirteen nine to O'Sullivan on the head to head. I think the significant recent meeting was the world final, twenty fourteen, when O'Sullivan led on day one, Selby came back and won the title on day two. Significant for Selby, of course. It got him 21. his first world title. He's won two more. World number one. And uh, for O'Sullivan, significant as well, because since then he's not been back in the one table at the Crucible. The one table setup. Yep. Had he have won that, that would have been six world titles. Who's to say by now he could have surpassed Stephen Hendry? 26. Yes, and of course they've played in the final of all of the the major events, these two, so they're serious heavyweights of the game. Slightly different generations. Sullivan will be 43 when the UK Championship is on early December. Good start this, though, from Selby. Already was forced into. Twenty-seven. Yeah, he sat in Grost uh, last night in the hotel watching. Thirty-four. The uh, Ed and Sharaf Peter Ebden quarter-final on Andy Goldstein's phone. Until quite late. He's a 30. big snooker fan, that's the point, Selby. As well as, a, of course, a fine player. He loves being part of this sport. And we'll be loving this start. If he can win the frame at this visit, that really does lay down an early marker in this semi-final. 42. Forty-three. Well, it could be that the break ends there. Nothing wrong with the shot that he's played. He just gives arc this way. Full ball onto that middle red. It's the last contact he really wanted, that. Touching ball. Touching ball, which obviously is good for Selby with regards to his safety shot. But he wanted to continue the break, of course. Mark Selby, fifth. Well, the break's over, but uh, <laughs> on another day, would have got on a red there and probably went on to win the frame. So it's not like it was a grievous error from Selby. Good shot that from the Sullivan. I expected the keyboard to be a good check side, but the running side is the reason it sped all around the table. And getting back to bowl, you're not the easiest. If anyone can, Mark Selby can leave it safe somehow, given his track record. Great tactical player. Almost enjoys the tactics of the game. Yeah, nice kiss on the pink. He holds his hand up as well he might. And 
Mike Sullivan has caught the blue. First glance could be worse. It's always a danger on that shot. You play the swinging round the table cue ball, trying to come inside the position where the blue is, but if you don't catch it dead right, you always hit the blue. So they'll be coming with the same angle, wide angle around the table. Giving us a something, this red. Not easy. Yeah, the other thing though is that reds have gone towards that side cushion, which obviously favours Selby being 50 in front. Although we've seen Ronnie O'Sullivan make so many miraculous breaks, it almost feel it sort of doesn't matter. But firstly, he's got to get in in this frame, in this match. And he is in. What a terrific pot. One. Just for so well played, wasn't it? Didn't play it with top spin, he actually stunned it around. Well, that cue ball didn't go very far there. Five. Trying to develop reds, I think. Well, that'll do. Take what you can... What you get Six. given at this game. It's actually changed the frame a lot. None of the pink's safe. The reds are very gettable now from where they've finished up. So that was a stroke of very good fortune. It already feels like a high-class match. And the odd little piece of luck like this could eventually make the difference between the two, I suppose. Well, it's a big fluke, isn't it? He's played to develop the reds, but the fact that he's now been able to snooker Selby could make a big difference. Selby 44 in front, but in a spot of bother here. Ronnie O'Sullivan's only lost four frames en route to the semi-finals, but he knows this is by far the most severe test he's faced in the tournament as he looks to win back-to-back -back titles, having triumphed in Coventry last week at the Champion of Champions. <laughs> Didn't want to avoid all the reds Bam. there. Miss. This is going straight back. Four. Yes, Greg Coniglio is the referee in charge here. Well, that's such a groundhog day there. Ronnie Sullivan, four. Well, well. Well, I miss. I'm guessing he's trying to just no, fly a three cushion to flick that red that he's just going past. But the trouble with this shot, if you make the most minor of adjustments, you're, you're likely to hit it full ball. You know, it will, over three cushions, it will magnify the difference between the first and second shot. And the third and the fourth in this case. Goodness me. He's oh, in a lot of yes. trouble here, clearly. Yep. <coughs> he really is. That's four very similar shots. His biggest problem is there's not one red near a cushion that he could just play to lean on. Take five. Well, that's the shot. In the end, it's a beautiful shot, and it cost him points, but not the frame.
Well, we'll see. It might cost him. That's another terrific long red from O'Sullivan, second in the frame. And all the reds are now in play. So this is a chance for the five times world champion. And uh, as I say, the fluke could be big in this frame. It got him the chance to lay the snooker. What a fabulous red it was. Five. Six. Table not so difficult now. And crucially, O'Sullivan is getting to the point where pink being safe, I don't think it's going to be his, his problem. He can win the frame before that comes into play. He's 15 behind because of all those penalty points. 13. And that changes everything, the fact that he hasn't got to worry about it. Well, that's not one of his best. Cube jumped there. I think it didn't. Because it jumped in the air, I don't think it gripped the cloth as he expected it 21. to. This is now more difficult than it should be. If he played through that gap, it's a great shot. He's still got another big shot to play black to red. He could ro roll it in and finish up the table. That's crucial. That is crucial. Okay. It's a movement, perhaps. Twenty nine. Please don't click on the shot here. Wait until after he's played it. Thank you. Well, Greg Canigolo just speaking to one of the photographers who would have been in O'Sullivan's eye line there, maybe just clicking when he shouldn't be, or anyway, he's been told. One. It's only frame one. It already feels big, this. O'Sullivan had his chance there to counter-attack and really steal the frame. Selby will not need the pink. Six. Yes, that was the point, wasn't it? If Sullivan puts the red-black there, it's, it does change the frame a lot. The pink comes into play with regards to Selby needing it. Look straight up at... Uh, Photographers there. Seven. Just one of those matches that's going to be compelling viewing, I think, all afternoon. Whatever happens, whoever wins eventually. Not the sort of match that you sort of tune in towards the end. You want to be watching from the start. This first frame has set the pattern, really. Very interesting start. Ten. Twelve. So Mark Selby needs brown and blue to take a 1-0 lead buying snookers. Yeah, it's like you say, a fascinating start to this match. 90. Often 
matches with such such a feeling of uh, anticipation. You can start a little tamely, but not this one. Twenty-four. We're dropping this right over the bottom right, and Sullivan is likely to concede anyway. Well, uh, Sullivan is still talking to the referee yeah, about yeah, the photographer. Him, he okay. felt he was put off okay. on that ready mist, and All right. Ronnie, on the I frame. think once the photographer Mark thrown Selby. out, anyway, the frame's gone to Mark Selby, the first of a possible 11 between these two big beasts of the snooker jungle, playing for a place in the final here in Belfast tomorrow. Mark Selby leads Ronnie O'Sullivan 1-0. Frame two, Mark Selby to break. Welcome back to the Waterfront Hall here in Belfast this Saturday afternoon. Mark Selby 1, Ronnie O'Sullivan 0. The score here in the semi-finals of the Northern Ireland Open. Six required to play either Judd Trump or Ed and Sharaf tomorrow. Very interesting start. But like O'Sullivan was taking the upper hand, he fluked that red, laid a snooker from that, knocked in a great long red, was in. Mr Red seemed to have been put off by a photographer who I can tell you is no longer in the arena. And Selby did what Selby always does, it seems, which is make the clearance. Yeah, the photographers have, have got to, I guess they've got to snap as quickly as they can because they, they normally get slung out by O'Sullivan. So I suppose that's why they do it in the first place. And shown the door. Well played. He was up straight away. He knew that was a mistake. He knew he'd caught the red too thick, which... Is the reason he's left the red, and now O'Sullivan is having a look to see if the black pots to the right corner. That was the first thing he was interested in. Yeah, this keyboard's just drifted too far. He didn't play that. Good shot to get not only the pot but the cue to grip so much that he was on the so red. Now the black goes for sure. Eight. This red that he's played on opens everything up. 50. Has to go because he looked at it before the black was potted last time. Six. He's, he's so good at clearing the black spot, O'Sullivan, it's untrue. There were two or three reds that could have given other players problems. They've gone now. Three. 
Ninety four. I think he's discovered a a route through to the pink, which is not what he's playing. Would have played on the black. That's okay. It's a good shot. Choice of red. Certainly the left red's there if he wants it. Good. Well, that clearly goes. Really nice atmosphere. 31. In the Waterfront Hall here in Belfast for this match. There's a hush of anticipation. Oh, that's a good split. He's not on one perfectly, but he has a couple of reds he can go at. 36. As you saw, he had to use the pink to break the reds up. They were just ahead of the reds there, the pink was. his 20th match of the season they still only lost one that was to Mark Davis in the semi-finals of the English Open in Crawley 22 titles of course this season Shanghai Masters and the Champion of Champions both invitation 14. events so they haven't helped his ranking position certainly helped his bank balance though Forty-two. Not sure what he played there. I don't think he wanted to crash into that other red very much. It's not too bad. There are reds available, but he's got no angle on the blue to get close to one of them. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. He's looking to see if the pink goes. Wow, that does go. He didn't know too much about that. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. Oh, this is a terrific match already, isn't it? Mistakes are very few and far between, 61. but they're the significant point of this match. And Sullivan missed that red in frame one. 62. In this frame, Selby's safety shot hit too thick, left the red over the pocket, and he's been sitting down ever since. Well, they both look so focused, don't they? <laughs> Earlier in the week, when the event started, O'Sullivan was playing a little 68. loosely, but not now. He's uh, really bang up for this. They both are. 69. And O'Sullivan with a good chance now to make career century number... 975. Yes, and uh, it's been such a good break, as you see. He's been out of position 76. once or twice. I think one of the key confrontations 76. in this match is, there's no doubt about it, Selby has got to handle the sheer weight of scoring that O'Sullivan is capable of. And there's very few players in the game that can withstand all that when he's on song. 84. So hard to keep him out for any 85. period of time. Well, put 
simply is the best break builder the game's ever seen. 92. And no signs of declining on that score. 93. So it's another one for the collection, as long as this black goes in. It's game on. One hundred and one. Seventh century of the tournament for Ronnie O'Sullivan. One hundred and eight. One hundred and ten. I think he used to dread playing Selby a little bit. He called him the torturer for a while, but what he said was since working for Eurosport, he realises, oh, he doesn't, doesn't just do that to me. <laughs> he does it to everybody. Not a personal thing. Point is, even a fine match player like Mark Selby can't do anything when he's rooted to his seat, as he has been throughout this frame, watching the master at work. It's a wonderful total clearance of 135 from Ronnie O'Sullivan. What a great start to this semi-final. It's on as even. All square then at the waterfront hall. One frame apiece. Ronnie O'Sullivan. So Ronnie O'Sullivan, superb. 135 has levelled the semi-final. Best of 11, remember now. First to six, down to one table. This table's been reclocked overnight as well. It was playing a little heavy yesterday. We've well, just brushed the blue there, but it's okay. Full of contact, he would have been in trouble. Cue ball would have uh, obviously stayed pretty much where the blue is. This is the break off again. He's gone back to the more standard shot. Just brushes the blue, but the cue ball still makes its way towards the bulk cushion. Still offered some sort of chance for Selby though, but it was much tougher than it could have been. That was such an awkward shot to be left. I was thinking that perhaps Selby had got away with one a little bit there, but that's not an easy red to start a break. A difficult angle to work. Well, this is... Um, it's been two frames, but they've been very enjoyable to watch. He's only missed one ball. It's the ball that cost him the first frame, that red, when it looked like he'd been slightly distracted by a photographer. And that's particularly well played. Also, right cushion before bottom cushion there. And that's a good way of playing the shot. Greg Coniglio either puts the pink on its own spot or the highest available, which is, in this Seven. case, as you see, the blue. Now, a low angle on the black Eight. means he can shift that red that's troublesome directly above it. Red didn't go, as you saw that we moved here. Well, 
I think that was calculated. I think that was a good shot. 50. He obviously didn't know exactly where the balls were going to finish. Sixty. Well, he's surprised. Played on the the red at the bottom of the bunch, Bunches. and the cue ball flew from that cushion. Test is queuing, recovery shot needed. Fabulous. How does he play the same shot? Up for the red. Has he made the adjustment? This is where he's such a good player. Frighteningly good. Realised that the cushion's a bit bouncy. Made the adjustment. Still not entirely pleased. It does seem very springy, that top cushion. First. I guess so the great players just cope with it, which he has done. I mean, the ready knocked into the green pocket was an example of that. Great recovery pot. One thing about Ronnie O'Sullivan, he does have a lot to say about seven. things, but he doesn't complain about conditions. No, he, he adapts 13. to them. He always has done. Forty-five. Caught a glimpse of the other red, which is potable. Doesn't mean he has to go into them unless he really feels he's got the angle. Might have to, actually. Okay, red to the middle instead. Frame can't be won without those reds being shifted, though. 53. That's a very good shot to leave himself a chance to go into the bunch. <clears throat> it's split 61. well, but there's only one, and that's the far right red that he could get to. <clears throat> this is very good. This really is top notch. 62. I think there's no doubt what's focused the mind here is who he's playing. It's almost like the best compliment you could play Mark Selby is how focused and how well Ronnie O'Sullivan is queuing here. Seventh. So snooker's required, and a chance for back-to-back -back centuries. Yeah, this is the kind of match, Dave, that a lot of snooker enthusiasts are watching, but I tell you, a lot of the other Seventh professionals six. will be watching this too. 77. They realise what they've got to do, the levels they will have to get to to match this.
Well, the frame started with O'Sullivan just catching the blue, but it was just a thin contact. T3. Cue ball went towards Bulk. Selby took on a tough red, left a chance, and this has been T4. the result of it. So having won the first frame pretty dramatically, he's been largely frozen out now for the next two. Ninety one. Ninety two. Yes, you can make one for two here. Time breaks one four five twice made this week, so he can't come anywhere near that, but at the moment that wouldn't be on his mind. This red then for back to back centuries. Well this is about as good as it gets. Five. Looking to reach his 48th world ranking final. Stephen Hendry's been in the most with 57. Of course, there's more than ever now. But Hendry retired when he was 43. That's the age that O'Sullivan will be in a month. And look at the way he's playing. 114. Yeah, came a bit awkward on the green. Nevertheless, 114 14. to follow the 135 in frame two. So having lost that tight opening frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan has really switched it on here in Belfast. And he's gone into the lead in this gripping semi-final by two frames to one. Semi-final feels like an early Christmas gift for snooker fans, doesn't it? It's been terrific already. Selby won that gripping opening frame. Sullivan's made back-to-back -back centuries to lead 2-1. This is the last before the interval. Selby's had just a handful of shots since winning that first frame. <laughs> you pleased with that break-off shot? Any time I think <laughs> the mood O'Sullivan's in, if you don't leave a pot on of any sort, you've got to be happy. There's the safety stats so far. There's not been that many safety shots played, really. No, it's been a proper game of snooker, though, isn't it? And that man, well, from his point of view, if he could win this frame and get to 2-2, two -two, he would feel that uh, he's done pretty well. He's weathered a storm, but he's got to get there yet. Well, he's been given some applause, but it's not quite right. There is a red available, at least one. But when you've set out two centuries, this is not an easy starter.
No, he's uh, been sat out, hasn't he, for a couple of frames, and this was by no means straightforward. And that is he didn't try and get the cue ball in and out of bulk. Now he must have had it in his mind that he could miss it, I think. The way that he played it. Well, goodness me, he's unlucky there. He, he hoped that the Cuba would stop short enough for him to be on the black. It was a delightful pot. Well, he's, he's not missed a long pot yet, O'Sullivan. Five out of five. This was magnificent queuing. The Cuba just bounced up too far. I think he thought about playing the safety shot there. He's, he's gifted Mark Selby something. And you don't really like to give early Christmas presents away, like chances like this. Let's see what Selby can do. Yeah, I guess O'Sullivan just queuing so well, just thought, I'm going to pop this blue. It's a chance to really take a grip of the frame. But it didn't go in. Had another chance here into the yellow pocket, but didn't drop there either. Down to Selby then to put something together. Eight. Mark Selby, eight. So Mark Selby not able to punish. This is a some shot to finish him there. That's a, just a majestic safety shot. Roy O'Sullivan has got everything. And that was as good a safety shot as you could ever see. Done well. So just the sting has just been taken out of that uh, O'Sullivan 
burst of brake building with this frame being a little tactical which has to be slightly in Selby's favour Probably he's got those that uh, Sullivan's preparedness to play that game as well against him to really dig in Mark Selby well and truly on the back foot in this match having won that opening frame and he scored eight points since But of course, he's so tough as well, we know that. And he comes back under pressure time and time again. Yeah, both players getting that cue point behind. The blue, like, a, there's a magnet there or something. Another great shot. This time, I think the red's a little bit more exposed, a little more open than when Selby was playing from in behind there. Yeah, just got the red. Rerack. Re well, we're going to have a rerack. That was very sudden, but they both come to the same conclusion. It would seem that we're going to be stalemate there. So, we're going to start the frame again. It's on a bit of a knife edge this match, isn't it? It is. It's been terrific. I mean, those first three frames. Very absorbing, and uh, anyone who's got any interest in this game will be gripped to these two meeting for the first time in what, what is just about two years. Yeah, and a very interesting match tonight as well. It's a different dynamic. We've got Judd Trump, who's played so well all week, an established champion, and Ed and Sharaf, who came through late last night against Peter Ebden in his first semi final. And that'll be live from 6.45 this evening. Looking forward to that one. Ed and Sharif, what a big match for him. Let's hope he enjoys it. Judd Trump, he's playing some seriously good stuff. The fourth frame, Mark Selby to play. So, frame four was re-racked. We go again with Ronnie O'Sullivan leading Mark Selby 2-1. Selby won a close opening frame. O'Sullivan's had breaks of 1-3-5 and 114 to lead 2-1. This is the last frame before the interval in this first semi-final of the Northern Ireland Open. Has that red covered the other one is the question. Selby's having a look. I think it, it has done. Yeah. Let's come to O'Sullivan's rescue. First long ball that he's missed. Yes, it wasn't the most natural angle to come around the table. It's almost, you want to hit it on the thin side to swing the cue ball back to some sort of safety. Well, I thought he looked very uncomfortable in that shot. It wasn't much fun to be playing, to be honest. Well, he's not easy to rattle, Selby, but the quality of O'Sullivan's play, not just the big breaks, but the safety as well that he's produced all round, has been pretty formidable.
So he's in again. One. I think this is a much friendlier rivalry than it once was, but it's still a rivalry, make no mistake. They are both going all out to beat the other, and at the moment it's advantage O'Sullivan. Well, Five. both of the reds who've got in into that top right pocket, the green pocket, have been a little awkward. That one was easier than the first, but there were similar kind of shots. Six. Eleven. Good screw into the bunch here, hit the pink full on. Wow, he called it full on all right. He didn't hold back there at all. A contact. Seventeen. Eighteen. Well, he's annoyed. He couldn't really just get off the bunch of reds there. He had to. Keeble just went forward too much and then just couldn't get away from them. Probably time to walk away, play a good safety shot. Yeah, he knows that he's got Selby on that back foot and he wants to keep him there. Particularly in this pre-interval frame which so often has a, a psychological bearing on the match. Oh yes, yeah, but he went for one in what turned out to be the re racked frame, didn't he? The blue, which presented the chance which Selby never took. That's history now, but he might not want to do the same thing again. He's looking though at a pot, I think. Wow. Well, he's very attacking, yeah, there's no doubt about eight. that, because there's an argument there that the safety shot was the right shot. Can't pull everything, however good you are. Certainly low percentage. Had to get it, really. Uh, Selby uh, has lost his way immediately. Awkward with black and blue tied up like that. Yeah, Ronnie was lucky that the blue ended up going into those three reds. Well, this, this has got a, a look about it, the frame that Mark Selby often cashes in on and wins. But at the moment, he looks under pressure, understandably. Yellow. One. Well, that's brought blue and black into play.
Yeah, Selby is under it here. He's done it to so many. He's done it to O'Sullivan in the past. But he's the one feeling the pressure at the moment. Well, this time, O'Sullivan doesn't take advantage. So what can Mark Selby do here? I think if he, if he could get to 2-2, two -two, that would be a major result for him. This was a chance for O'Sullivan. He's not missed many from distance, but he missed that one. One. Immediately, he looks at the red to the right of the black. He'd love to get that in play. Six. Wow, that's not a good shot. Twelve. Is he even on this red? That was nervy. And this is not an easy shot either. It's not his first choice. Mark Selby, 12. My goodness me, is Ronnie really thinking about playing a three ball plant here? This looks very, very difficult. He could probably roll up with his red and get another re rack out of this frame, but it's not how he thinks. Goodness me, look at this shot he's thinking about here. I don't well, this will be some shot. Something you'd expect someone like Earl Strickland to be playing this. Yeah, it might have been different if the red was hanging in the jaws, but it wasn't. It needed the sort of correct contact. Problem is, it is still close to the jaws, so it's a little bit of stalemate coming up again. We've already rewrapped the frame once. I just think it'll end up another one. Is it going to be a double rewrack? Who's going to be the first to look at the other? Well, Ronnie looked over. Yeah. If I was Mark Selby, I don't think I'd want one. There's no future in this. Yeah, they're looking at each other. It's going to happen another again. One. It's another re wrap. Re <laughs> yep. Who would have thought it? Just because the red went over the pocket. Neither wanting to leave it on. So scratch all that from your memories. 
as it seems to these days. But it doesn't change the fact that Mark Selby at the moment, you feel, is just sort of hanging on here. There's only one frame in it, but he's definitely on the back foot. He had a chance there. It went wrong pretty quickly when he was in the balls. But as I say, if he can get to 2-2, that's a big result for him. It is, but he, he hasn't looked very confident in amongst them. Nowhere near in the same level as O'Sullivan, which obviously that's not surprising, but you know he's only going to hurt O'Sullivan by scoring. All the safety in the world is not really going to make any difference. At the moment, Ronnie looks in the league of his own when he's in amongst them. But he's only 2-1 up, and it's a long match. I wonder if O'Sullivan's ever played a frame before that's been re-racked twice. That's one for the Anoraks to sort out. Right now, we're going to start frame four again. Four frame. Mark Selby's frame. So it's still 2-1 to Ronnie O'Sullivan. This is the third time now frame four has got underway. It's eight to tell you this day, but I think it happened last week, <laughs> actually, in Coventry in that final, before the final frame of the session. There was two consecutive re-racks. Ronnie ended up making a century in the frame when it was not re-racked. There you go. So I was in the restaurant with all the Eurosport crew. I didn't see that. Well, who'd have thought it happened twice in a week? Anyway, we're underway again. Still a big frame, this, the one before the interval. Oh, nice pot. Maybe that, uh, I mean, that was a 12-minute frame that came to nothing in the re-rack. can't remember how long the first one was, but we've gone a while since when he made those back-to-back -back hundreds. And uh, maybe it's just slowed the pace down a touch. Decent shot. The most likely red. Three. Gives him the chance perhaps to open the black up in some way. That one that's just coming out to the left there. But he's got to get to it somehow. Ten. So, he managed to do some of the hard work when the black's potted. Is it going to be available? Certainly to one Seven. pocket, I would say.
18. And once again, this is not easy. <clears throat> 24. He's not really got great control in this break. I know, I guess after watching O'Sullivan break build, it's going to seem a little different. But I don't think he's looking that assured yet. Of course, it can all change. Well, well, that's uh, 26. No good finishing there. What well, he's closest to, don't know if it pots anywhere, but it's certainly not what he meant. It will pot. It's not easy, close to this. Playing the one above it. Oh, a bit of a struggle. And the next shot's not easy either. This is a very hard fought break. Green will have to be the one. As you say, though, the thing about the re-racks, it's sort of just taken the, the sting out of the O'Sullivan charge a little bit. It's just calmed everything down, slowed everything down. Mark Selby has really had to battle 31. during this break, but we know that he is a great battler, and it's starting to look good now for the world number one. He has been playing well of late. He lost two really high quality matches in a row to Neil Robertson at the International Championship, then the Champion of Champions. He had a maximum in the second of those. So his form was good. I think he'd be happy enough with his game coming here. First major test, I guess, was yesterday against Tepchar and New. Came through 5-3. But this is another level in terms of a test. But he's quietly going 45. about his business here. The pink to lead by 51. Needing a couple more red colours to make it 2-2. Which is a big result, I think, for Selby at the interval. Fifty-two. It's done well here. It's not been straightforward this break. Denied. Yeah, sometimes it's not how, it's how many, and uh, he's eventually Six. got there. Well, it sets it up really nicely for when they come back. 
after the interval, Mark Selby was hit with everything for two frames, those two big centuries from O'Sullivan. But the couple of re-racks, I think, helped, actually, just, as I say, just slow things Six down. Eight. Give them a chance to regroup. Seventy-five. Selby's made five centuries 76. in the tournament. Eighty-three. Eighty-four. Well, these much hyped matches don't always live 91. up to their billing, but this one has done, and we're still in the relatively early stages. Mark Selby's weathered a bit of a storm here. 92. And he's putting together an excellent break of his own. Needs to get on this yellow to make a century. Well, the black's not in. But 92, 92 will do nicely, three. considering what he was hit with by Ronnie O'Sullivan. Back-to-back -back centuries of 135 and 114 from the rocket. But Selby has responded. So it's set up really nicely as they head off for the interval. Mark Selby and Ronnie O'Sullivan all square. Two frames apiece. Uh, Neil has joined us from the commentary box. Neil, I'll, um, I'll start with uh, with you before we look at the last. Just just quickly, what have you made of the first four frames? Ah, it's fantastic. That's why we love snooker, isn't it? I mean, this, the battle between these two players who are so different has been amazing. Ronnie's awesome uh, scoring mm. power, break building, but Selby's come out of the session 2-2, two -two, you know, and I uh, yeah, heard him have a little chat with Ronnie as he walked off, you know, as I was coming up in the lift. I, I'm surprised Ronnie wants to be involved in that, but yeah. he's having a little, little chat about the table, but there you go, that's Do you what they're doing. Do they're best of friends off the table, having a chat at the mid-session? Um, they've just got so much respect for each other, yeah. you know, they're probably discussing the table because they had a new cloth and new cushions yeah. and how it's running because it's been heavy for the last couple of days. Yeah. OK, let's have a look back at uh, some of the action. The first frame had started off brilliantly for O'Sullivan, then he was moaning at someone moving on his shot. Yeah, I like that shot. You know, OK, it's a, a little bit of safety involved, but, you know, what a curing shot, you know, fantastic. And then this next one, this, might, this is all about sight right, because, you know, there, there is an argument, Neil, that he wouldn't go for that normally because, it, you know, it's dangerous. Then he plays this, and uh, some guy hasn't got his tripod, who I'm afraid has left the arena. But I think sometimes, you know, there's an argument that these guys have got to take these pictures quickly because they're going to get slung out anyway, aren't they? <laughs> they might as well just take them on the shot. <laughs> uh, Foldy, let's go to frame two now. Of course, uh, that was the 135 from O'Sullivan, but a poor safety from Mark Selby. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, it, it was one mistake, right? And he leapt up in the air, Mark. I mean, of course, it didn't have to go over the pocket. It was, that was a, it was a minuscule mistake, but he paid dearly for it because O'Sullivan looked in just great form here, you know, I mean... Some of the shots he's playing, he's just doing... He's playing the left-handed shot around two cushions there. He overran a couple of times, but he always found a way of recovering the break. This split is very good. You know, he found a red to get on in the middle bag, and he went on to knock in the century, and it was a good comeback from the first frame when he may or may not mm. have been put off by a photographer. Uh, another century from Ronnie in the next frame, a 1-1-4. Difficult red as well from Ronnie, Jim. Yeah, this is it's a nice opener shot. The way he's played it is give the, the pot all the, you know, like, nice pace. This was a good pink, played off two cushion, screw with check side, perfect on the red below the break, uh, below the black, and goes on to win the frame. Yeah. I really like this shot because he's, um, he's 61 in front, and if he misses this, he can do the game, and there's 75 left on the table, confidently played it, goes on to make another century. Interesting thing about this frame, Jimmy, was that a couple of times... Ronnie looked as if he was struggling with a couple of the bouncy cushions, but he found a way of m remembering that, and then he played the shot differently the third time. You know, yeah. so he's very clever at adapting to what he's playing on. I, I, no one gets the pace of a table like yeah. O'Sullivan. Within two or three shots, you know, you, I've played him in exhibitions. The tables are slow, quick. Within two or three shots, he's got the pace of the yeah. table. Brilliant. Uh, and into the last frame, you wait ages for a re-rack, and then two come at the same time, Neil. Exactly, and uh, it took the sting out of the match a little bit in favour of Mark. You know. Um, 
he ended up making a break here, but he looked all over the shop in it. Not really that he was struggling, he just struggling with his cue ball. You know, that was a beautiful shot. But um, here, you know, he's, he's falling up out of position up the table all the time. He ended up getting on the green there. So he's scratching around a little bit at the beginning, but in the end, he played a key shot which got him right in amongst them. I think it was probably that one now, we're looking back on it. And he makes a break of 92, no century, but mm. that was like gold dust to him, a 90 break then, because he really need, needed that 3-1 down. He's looking down the barrel of getting heavily beaten, and he's not now. Yeah, uh, there was a shot in that frame, the frame that never was. Uh, and it was a shot that never was as well. It was uh, this one here, three ball plant. He's looking for the first, the second, onto the third, onto the fourth. He never played it. Uh, and of course, then he tucked up to the red and it resulted in that re-rack. I think it was the, probably the right decision not to play it. But we're going to play it, or Jimmy's going to play well, it. As me and Neil would say from the Neesden days, it's definitely a do-your-money shot. But where Ronnie O'Sullivan has been so aggressive, he wanted to carry on, the, uh, carry on potting. So he's trying to play a two-ball plant off uh, to hit that third red and hopefully pot the red over the arc. OK, so just to confirm, you hit the first one. Onto the second, onto yeah. this, and then one. that sends it this way and to hit that and pot it. Position is automatic because he's on the black, but he, he ended up playing the right shot. He just rolled up to the red. But okay. this, this is what he Get was ready to go mad, all right? Because even O'Sullivan, even O'Sullivan wouldn't take this it This is what he was looking at. See? Okay. Just, that's what Let's I mean, do again. your money shot. They've, they've, all, um, <laughs> they've all been marked out. That last one is for the white ball, Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Here we go. Andy we we have marked thanks them. Thanks for that, Andy. Neil, it, it was the right decision, Neil, not to play, obviously, wasn't it? It was. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, Jimmy thinks he's played a different shot to what I do here, but I'm not going to get involved in that. I don't think he's trying to play this at all. Um, oh, 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 no, we it's can't do your money like shot, that. that's for sure. Come on, we have to have one that's more. That's why he called do your money shot. Go on, have one more, Jimmy. You need Earl Strickland to play this shot, don't you? Paul play. Earl yeah. the Pearl would love Earl this shot. Earl the Pearl, yeah. It's not really a snooker shot, is it? No, no. if you missed it, though, the but problem will be... But that's what Ronnie O'Sullivan's looking at. It's yeah. smash his queue up if Hell tried it. Here we go. Oh, wow, Miles off, Jim. Come on. Where's Debbie McGee? I think he played a three-ball <laughs> plant. I'm not getting I involved. Think I, I don't think I he played think this. I've played her role at the moment. What did you, you say, Neil? I don't think he played this, but I'm not getting... No, I, I can't, can't keep on saying that. We'll <laughs> ask him. <laughs> we'll get, I think he won't have it, will he? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, James. <laughs> Come on, let's have a few shout-outs for Jimmy. Come on. We love you, Jimmy. Make up. Go on, Jimmy. That's good. Oh. Very good. You see? Got any books left? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe Ronnie should have played it. Who knows? So we're going to have a quick break. It's beautifully poised at 2-2. Two -two. When we come back, both players will be looking for a place in tomorrow's final. We'll see you in a minute. two balls one of them was on his way to that 114 so it sort of really didn't matter and the other one was when that photographer got in his way not mr Longpot either as well incredible stuff um out of the two players who will be more relieved to be 2-2 two -two at the interval jim mark selby um you know ronnie was 2-1 up and, and he's all over in there on, on all the stats but uh, this score is just two each so it's like start again now so now it's only a best of seven very tight you know, I, as I said at the top of the show, I can't pick a winner. Yeah, does that mean then if Mark Selby will be more relieved out of the two that O'Sullivan will be sat there in his dressing room thinking, you know, what's happening here? I should be leading. No, he'll be fine because he's played OK, O'Sullivan. You know, he's had a, he's a fa fantastic break. He's, hundred, he, he's not Mr Long Pot, but uh, Mark Selby has missed a few. And he, he did have the opportunity to go behind 3-1, which he never, because mm. Ronnie never took the opportunities. Yeah, it seems to be all about the breaks as well. Do you expect more of that to continue throughout the match? Listen, the two of the best players in the world, I just think it's, you know, it's quality all the way, but too close to call for me. And talking of close to call, you think it's going to go to the wire, do you? I think it's going to go to the last frame, yeah. Yeah? OK, well, there you go. Who's to say it won't? I'll tell you what, it all looks like it's going to be a, a fantastic finale to our first semi-final. Remember, we're back tonight for our second one, so make sure you join us from 6.45, but... <laughs> to book their place into tomorrow's final. Two of the greats on show. Talking to greats, let's hand back to our two greats, Neil Folds and Dave Hendon. Thank you, Andy. Looking forward to the second half of this enthralling drama between Mark Selby and Ronnie O'Sullivan. Set up nicely, 2-2, two -two, first to six to Thank reach the final. Five. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break.
Mark Selby managed to halt the O'Sullivan charge by winning that fourth frame. As battle resumes, a good break off shot from O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan up on all the stats, but bottom line is match score all square. Remember the head tech coming in favoured O'Sullivan, 13 wins to nine, but Selby has beaten him in a total of five finals. O'Sullivan's won in three finals. They seem to meet, if they do meet, very much at the business end of tournaments. First meeting, though, between them for around about two years. The UK final 2016 was the most recent. That was won by Selby, 10-7. Yeah, the strange thing is that they've both won quite a bit since then, haven't they? But they've never met along the way. I think a combination of uh, Ronnie has done well in UK-based events. I know he won in Shanghai a couple of times. Generally in UK-based events where Mark Selby has struggled. Mark Selby has won a lot of events in Asia. Ronnie rarely goes to the Asia just for the Shanghai Well, Jimmy was saying he thinks it will go the distance. They've played six Siders. Selby's won four of them. But a long way to go yet before uh, we're near the end of this match. Under the bolt cushion, place you want to leave your opponent all the time. He's looking at this red. It may well be that it's, if he gets in, of course, a shot that takes him around the back of the black and up for safety. Trouble is, if you miss it sometimes, it doesn't go off in the same direction. That's okay. Better than okay. Good follow up. Uh, in the second frame, he left a red in this over this left corner, which cost him the frame. It's not quite as near the pocket this time. One. Plenty of a nice area there. Oh. Plenty of options. Table not bad. Red above the black is the one he'll be looking to 
get on before too long. And that opens quite a lot up. Eighteen. Playing that well over the ball. Nineteen. Wanted to get straight on the over the black. Now we move that red above it, I think. Could be away now. Three reds all look like they go to the left middle if he needs them. T six. I think the bottom one in the five bunch of five also pots to the bottom right pocket. Forty two. Forty three. Now that was pretty obvious, a couple of balls were available. To that uh, left middle, he's shaking of his head though, uh, Sullivan. Just so highly focused though, isn't he? As I said earlier, when the event began, he started a little loose, just come from Coventry, of course, and he's thrown his cue at a few, but still breezed through the early rounds. But now he's playing just excellent match snooker. Fifty six. Fifty seven. Black to lead by sixty four as we approach an hour's playing time. Sixty four. Red and a colour needed. Sixty five. So that was frame rules, Dave pointed out. The question of whether he's going to go on and make another century here now. It was just the kind 72. of frame he needed, though, on the resumption. 
73. Seventy-eight. Well, he could well be on now for this third century. Yes, he played it so well, Dave, 86. to not lose the cue ball there to the side cushion. Eighty-seven. Well, that's amazing, and he's and really annoyed. He wanted another ton there. The Black has stayed out on eighty-seven, but he's won in the frame, and he's put Ronnie O'Sullivan back in front here in Belfast. It's a measure of how great he is, though, that he's annoyed there that he missed the black, but he still leads Mark Selby three-two. Mark Selby 3-2 here in the first semi-final of the Northern Ireland Open. <laughs> Looks set for a third century there, just broke down an 87. O'Sullivan's made 28 centuries this season. That's only in four tournaments. He's second on the list behind Neil Robertson on 34. And he wanted a 29th, didn't he? This was the, the black that he missed. He, he couldn't believe he'd missed it, actually. Caught the near jaw and wasn't happy about it. How did I miss it? Never been more than a frame between them. That can change here, though, in this sixth frame. Selby knows that. Yeah, not so easy to play a safety shot up the table with the reds all down there. I guess there is an area somewhere over near the top right pocket which looks relatively safe, but you might want to push one of the reds up and down. Key will somewhere behind the brown perhaps here. It's been a lovely atmosphere here today. There's real snooker enthusiasts here in Belfast, and well, he doesn't get a better matchup than these two, does it? World number one against arguably the greatest of all time.
No, it's always fascinating when these two play each other. They're very different personalities. But bottom line is they're both great snooker players. Multi-champions. And uh, they're producing the goods here today. Again, a fairly watchful frame, it's not impossible. But this could be racked up again. It's just the reds further down the table which are causing the issue here. At this point, it's not quite at that stage. Well, it's a difficult shot to get the keyboard back there, and he's done it, but now this table is very dangerous for a player that makes a mistake. I mean, just look at the Reds. They're all in open play. Ronnie will be keen to get the keyboard right back under the rail. Well, it's left something to the right middle, uh, by no means easy, with the risk that you'll probably lose the frame if you miss it, but the lure that if you do get it, well, the frame could be Mark Selby's here. Does he want to take that risk? And if he does play this red, he's got to play it 100%. Not even think about the possibility of missing it. Well, he can get his key to the bottom of the ball, so he's playing the safety shot here. But again, he hasn't found the cushion. And he stuck the red that he refused himself. 
Now, this is a very significant moment if he knocks this in. Well, there you have it. Well, that, in a nutshell, tells you the difference right now between the two players and their mindset. Because actually, I think Ronnie's was a little more difficult than the one that Mark refused. You just expect a big break, don't you? Because of who it is, because of what he's done Six. in the match. He's only missed three balls in the match, O'Sullivan, and only one of those actually was in, in live play, as it were. The one where he, he missed where it looked like a photographer put him off in the first Seven. frame. Anyway, he's in here. Well, isn't he just in here? Look at these reds. This really is, I was going to say a gift, but it's not really because he made it happen. Twelve. Thirteen. coming close to the 25th anniversary of his first ranking title, the UK Championship 1993, 19. the week before he turned 18. 20. 25. 26. I always think in a situation like this, keep it simple. Don't try anything too fancy. The reds are all in the open. You mustn't worry too much about high value colour. Just keep potting balls. Eventually, the winning line in the frame will come. Choice of reds, too close together. The top one obviously moves, believes, uh, puts the other red in play. Francina. No option but to take the low value 13. colours, but it doesn't really matter as long as he's still potting. Thirty two. And also in the back of his mind somewhere must be the, the Labrook series, this uh, run of three tournaments. Starts with the top 32 points earners for the season at the World Grand Prix, then top 16 for the Players' Championship, top 8 for the new Tour Championship. There's a lot of money to be earned. There's also a bonus for the C4. player who does the best in the three. So try to play himself into that. Yes, and he's not any by any means assured of being in it, as C5. you say, because he's won a couple of invitationals, which count for nothing regarding that series. Doesn't play in every ranking event, and he's got to make sure the ones he does play and does well in. Fault. Forty-one. 
46. Well, it's been hard work because of all the bolt colours he's knocked in in this break, but he's eventually Perfect. arriving at the point where the frame is just about his. There's two more reds. Fifty-three. Well, now that he's played on the black, he doesn't need two more reds. It's his frame ball. <laughs> Been a hard break, although he was in with a great chance when he came Six. to the table because he rolled a red very casually into the right middle. But as you can see, look at all the lower value colours he's taken. The thing is, he made it happen. Selby turned down a red, preferred to play safe, wasn't absolutely safe. He left a chance. O'Sullivan took on the red, potted it, and he's made the winning break, as I think everyone expected him to once he got in when the reds were. Yes, 65. it was very revealing that, I thought. Everyone plays the game differently, of course. But you felt that in some ways, O'Sullivan was, I thought, a tiny bit more difficult. He had the equal safety shot available to him as well. But he's in attacking mode, all right, and he's been like that all week. Seventh. Well, he was annoyed that he didn't make the century in the last frame. Seventy. Has a chance to make one here. Yes, he's made a total clearance here. Be one of the lowest I've seen. That's another magical shot. Look at that. Seventy-seven. Seventy-eight. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Make a break of 112. Total clearance. 85. Been, a, been chipping away. Those reds at the other end of the table all the way through. Eighty-seven. Yeah, he has practiced a lot over the years, of course, and you have to have the temperament to do it on the big stage. But there's also something just very special Night. about him. That green wasn't clean, but it went in. Brown, blue and pink for the century. Ninety four. So he earned the chance. 99. With the red he took on. This is for his third century of the afternoon. Next frame is massive for Mark Selby. Can't afford to go 5-2 down with O'Sullivan in this sort of mood. It's a total clearance of 112 from Ronnie O'Sullivan for the first time. He's two frames clear in this semi-final. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. So Ronnie Sullivan you. leads Mark Selby 4-2 here in the semi-finals of the Northern Ireland Open. He just made his third century break. Strange thing about that last frame was that the first pot almost felt like frame ball. The way the reds were, you just expected either one of them to make the big break, and it was O'Sullivan who knocked the red in. It's a good long pot. 
and not the worst kiss. I think Mark knows that he's only going to really affect the outcome of this game in his favour by scoring. Yes, he could have had a century of his own in the fourth frame. Made 92. Three. Four. Some discussion on Twitter about the the total clearance, 112. Is it one of the lowest ever? Because obviously we've taken a lot of low value colours. Chris Downer, the redoubtable statistician, has not seen a lower one. Okay, ten. So, attempt to nip the cue ball into the bunch here. Well, it's okay. You know, the red has come up the table. It's gone too far to pot. 18. Slowish walk around. Hmm. I must confess, I thought he was on that red at first. He's on a, a more difficult one that you can see. The left-hand red goes to the right corner. That's not the sort of shot you want, especially with the red up there, that he now can't get to. If he pots this, he was heading up into bulk. Unless he can stop, stop it with a little screw shot. This becomes more difficult the more you look at it. That's a really good shot. Nineteen. Well, he's not got the same... Twenty-six. ...control of the cue ball right now as O'Sullivan, but as I say, who, who has, really? When he's on form, nobody can match him in that department, you just have to keep pulling out shots. Which he's doing very well. Seven. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Now he just glance down the left side of the table. The shot to get into the bunch from the brown is on. It's quite a big target as well. Well, he'll settle for that. He didn't hit the bunch flush 38 39 turning into a, a terrific game of snooker between these two. 
46. It always had that look about it, massive anticipation. Sometimes matches don't live up to it, but this one is absolutely top class. 47. He was always heading to that jaw. He wasn't sure. He smiles as well he might as the red drops. Another red and a black and a Sullivan would require a snooker. 62. This is a quality contribution from Selby, it really is, bearing in mind what he's been hit with this afternoon. Yes, and the applause is because that was the ball that wins him back a frame. Seventh. Well, it started with a, a good long pot and to the last frame... Selby being maybe more aggressive. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I think he may have felt the last frame, if anything, has got to do him good and say, right, I have to take chances. I'm not going to win waiting for them to come. To go out and find them. Seventy eight. Well, the red stays out, so the break ends at Mark 78, Selby's but he's done enough to pull one back. An important frame, I think, for Mark Selby, just to stay in touch. Ronnie O'Sullivan's had three centuries here this afternoon, but there's only one frame between them. He's leading Selby by four frames to three. So Mark Selby has pulled one back. It's 4-3, first to six to reach the final here tomorrow. been fascinating right from the start this match and continues to be the quality has been extremely high O'Sullivan's pot success is 98 percent Selby on 94 I should say that the stat d stats don't apply for the moments in the frames that were re-racked so any misses or anything that happened in those moments in frame four didn't count meantime this was the the red in the last frame that selby nearly missed that could have made a big difference it would have been over the pocket and that was his little reaction went on to make the winning break
I'm not sure if he went for that or played the containing shot. Either way, there was a red. And then the black spot goes to the middle. Not an easy starter. Always hitting the near jaw. Very few pots been missed. Dave was pointing out, certainly in the favour of Ronnie O'Sullivan. Mark Selby made a few mistakes early, but not quite so many in the most recent frames. Almost a free shot there. He seemed to think he had at that red, which didn't get all that close to, but he's done no damage. Sullivan, as you can see, head on the safety stats. He's head on all the stats, for that matter. Scored over 250 more points, but there is still only a frame in it. Well, I think he played that as if it was a shot to nothing, cross double, but he missed it on the thin side by so far that none of the, nothing in that shot that was meant to work did work. Nice touch. He was coming in towards that black. Quite close, as Dave pointed out. Huge discrepancy in the point scoring. But it's all about just who wins the frames, basically.
eight. Well, it's no good after all that. Arnel Sullivan, eight. Well, couldn't pop one, so next best thing is to keep it very tight. Double kiss, not good for Selby. Not good at all. That was a seriously full ball, double kiss, wasn't it? it wasn't even a glance. So he's been in for the second time in this what? frame, no Sullivan. I just think in a match of this quality, and it is high quality, that you know any mistake could be fatal. Noticeable as well when O'Sullivan did break down Eight. first chance. He just swallowed it down, played a good safety. Got that patient attitude today. Nine. Ten years ago, in this very venue, he won the Northern Ireland Trophy. That was a ranking event that was held for a few years, a decade ago. If you said to him then, ten years on, you're still going to be very much at the top of the game, he may not have believed it. You've seen various retirement threats and talk about walking away. He did walk away one year, but came back at the end of the season and won Seven. another World Championship. Played that last shot particularly well as Kewan was awkward in a longish bridge over a ball. Three, four. Twenty five. Well, it's, it's a well-played split, but for once, his next red is not easy. I thought he played it okay. Got some fizz into the cue ball, but it looks like he's got to play a cutback red to the right corner if he's going to keep this break alive. Well, he's come around the back of the yellow as well. Yes, I think that's the best part about that shot, Dave. The pot was good, but the the way that he had a control of the cue ball was very good. He kind of knew that it was going to shape around the table. Nothing worse than clattering into balls and you don't know where they're all going to end up. But he didn't do that at all. Yeah, we just haven't seen... The unforced errors from O'Sullivan. Things have gone wrong, they will do in this game, but he's uh, so in control of every facet of his game right now. And of course, of himself, which is important too. 36.
37. So edging closer to 5-3 lead. Mox Elby's made comebacks, many of them, including against this man, but if he does go two down with three to play, he's going to have to produce something very special to win this match. 42. Forty-three. Not much of an angle here. Forty-eight. Well, so there's still enough points left. Should Selby come back to the table, but he wouldn't be having too much money on that happening. Little shake of the head. Red and the black, or red and the pink, should be enough. Just wonder if those two reds are plant to the left middle. I don't think Ronnie's had a look at those yet would mean that he could play this easily without too much in the way of position. It's just going to at least have a look at them, which he's doing. And if that's a plant, it means he's got nothing to do on the black. And the black, as I said, is frame ball. And it's top jaw, but I think he could make it into one if he wanted. It's handy for O'Sullivan that that is there. Just it means that that ball is quite a simple one. So, Mark Selby needs a snooker. If this red goes in, it's 61. frame over anyway. 62. And now he has a chance to make a fourth century in this match. And let's not forget, he broke down an 87 as well in the fifth frame. Mm, well, look at the scoreboard. I mean, he's okay in terms of the frame because there's only 59 69. on. 69. So it's not a century, but it's a good break of 69. Well, Mark Selby stays rooted to his seat. He's got problems here. O'Sullivan is on the brink of a place in tomorrow's final, just playing so well and leading Mark Selby in Belfast by five frames to three. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. So Ronnie O'Sullivan needs one more frame. He'll be the first man into this Northern Ireland Open final. Here at the Waterfront Hall in Belfast, he leads Mark Selby 5-3. And Selby will know he just cannot afford to offer up any sort of chance. There was a double kiss in that last frame that left an opening. And Sullivan made a 69 break from it. thinnest of contacts well he'll do well to pop one from there for Selby really the challenge is twofold first keep O'Sullivan out and then when he gets a chance he's got to do some damage himself.
Yeah, no thin edge on either side of the bunch. That no, Sullivan can get down the table from. A wonderful touch from O'Sullivan. He's very, very close to the pink on the way through. This is a kind of range where Mark Zelby's going to have to start knocking balls in. Tough as it is, this red. O'Sullivan strong on long potting, 8 out of 10, effectively. But that's a terrific one from Selby, a very timely one as well from the world number one. And let's be honest, there are a few better players in adversity than Mark Selby. He's been in this position before many times, including against O'Sullivan when he won his first ranking title, Mark Selby, nearly 11 years ago now, the 28 Welsh Open, 2008 Welsh Open. He was 8-5 down to O'Sullivan in the final, one nine eight. Just check to see if the black is available there, and I'm pretty sure it is. To the left. So this is where the comeback begins. Seven. Almost releases the shackles a little bit when you know that uh, you're a couple of frames down. For some reason, it, it can just make the Game seem a little easier, but of course, usually when the player gets back into it, if it does get level again, the pressure 40. starts to mount once more. There's only one 50. frame in the whole match where the person losing the frame has scored any points. That was the first frame. All the rest have been one to nil. But again, that doesn't include the re racks in frame four. So whoever's won the frames has dominated them completely. So we'll be hoping that pattern can continue here. Twenty two. Twenty three. Thirty-eight. 
39. For once, he's not quite perfect on this. 46. Little nudge on the other red, I think, required here. Done well there. 46. A little minor issue sorted out. Start signs that he's just queuing a, a little bit better now. Not that he's ever been that bad. He's failed to match O'Sullivan with his amazing scoring power, which, as I said before, is, well, applies to almost everyone else on the tour anyway. 53. But watching these two play each other, I just want to see this match go on forever. It's terrific. Great standard. 54. As Dave has pointed out, Selby not unknown to come back from behind against matches, especially O'Sullivan. He's not beaten yet. Now, just looking to see, I think if the left red will go past the rest of the bunch to the right corner. Well, obviously not in the end, is what he felt. And that's fine. <laughs> and he needs a red. 67. Good enough split this in the gap between the reds. 68. So it looks like the pattern's continuing. O'Sullivan has not 68. scored in this frame. It's been won with a big break by Mark Selby. And O'Sullivan knows only too well how Mark Selby often comes alive on the brink of defeat. So this match is still in the balance. 71. Seventy-two. Got to hand it to Selby, though. Quality of O'Sullivan's play. A lot of players, I think, would have wilted by now. Not this man, though. He's missed that black, which is a surprise, but he's done I'm enough afraid. with that break of 72 to pull one back. So O'Sullivan remains a frame from tomorrow's final. Mark Selby takes out frame nine. O'Sullivan leads in Belfast. 5-4. He may well shake his head slightly, but he's not badly on the blue. Obviously, the black's got to be got into play, but he's in first, crucially. bad. Slightly over here, I suppose. This is a bit of a struggle to get to. He's really stretching on this. Didn't look comfortable to it at any point. Ronell Sullivan, six.
Now needs an angle on a colour to get these reds open. Six. Seven. That looks perfect. Lucky he will just slithered off the side of the bunch there. Eleven. Didn't really get into them, obviously hit the pink instead of the reds. There's always a chance something would come out into the open though, which it hasn't. Mark Selby, 11. It's quite dangerous or attacking, whichever way you want to look at it, to play that shot. He's left what could be a big pocket up there. And to the left corner, the top red. It's not a certainty, but you can either pull it directly or off the red near the pocket here. The other option is to plant the two balls that are near the pocket themselves. One. Certainly played it well, and he goes into the bunch here. He get the reds open. The problem is, as you saw in the replay, that the pink and black are out of play somewhat. Wow. <laughs> Goodness me. There were reds heading towards all pockets there. It was the one in the middle. That Fun. Did for him in the end. Well, it, yeah, it, it looked like he got away with this, didn't it? The red looked like it was going in this corner here. The other one just flicked it out of the way. Meanwhile, there's another one going in the left middle. Thanks a bunch. Well, he's a bit further away from this Six. red than he would have wanted to be. Very sweetly struck, though. It'd be Seven. tough to win the frame here, but you wouldn't put it beyond him the way that he... such a creative player. It's going to take a lot of thought, though. I don't think he'd go near the pink and black right now. Try and get what he can around the remaining colours that are on. I suppose he could, if he really wanted to, he could pop the blue and try and develop the pink. It's an option.
especially with reds that are in play. Be an unusual way to go about it. Mm. No, he's on the thin one, that's all. Don't know if he's on the one he's very close to. <laughs> this is proving to be a very awkward little break to make. Again, the cue ball just drifts a fraction too far. Table has been recovered overnight. Maybe it's a little bit more lively than it was playing yesterday. A good shot. He's getting a huge cheer. I think the crowd are 16. while they're enjoying this much, this match. I think O'Sullivan is their man of the two. You ooze and ahs as the white travelled towards that pocket, which of course was Mark Selby's undoing when the red went in. Yes, he's looking to see if both of those reds go. Look like they probably did from an earlier shot. Such hard work, this break. Can't make a century. He's made three, but if he were to win the frame at this Fancy visit, two. it would be the best break of the match. Yes, he's just getting onto his colour that's the problem in all the way through. T3. He's gone miles too far. That is not where he wanted to be. Went too far. As I said, the right-hand red of the two seems to go. He could still cut it back in, but it's obviously very difficult from where he is. Terrific. That really is a special shot. He didn't want the break to end. He had a safety shot on. Well, what a break this is. I mean, it's only 26. doesn't sound much, does it? But the shots he's pulling out to continue it. And here's another one. Just brilliant. Steadily building a lead. You can just see how much O'Sullivan wants this win. Oh. And after all that, he misses that blue. Slight deceleration. And O'Sullivan, 26. Why overcut it? Selby out of his chair very quickly. 
that came as a surprise after all of that hard work. That's a clever shot because One. he feels that the pink can be pulled directly off the red here. Sullivan will be pretty disappointed, more than a little bit, I should think, the way that that ended. Seven. Just didn't hit that blue with any real authority for once. Eight. Just decelerated through this. It means it swerved off the true course slightly. So still the problem of that safe red on the side cushion. Fourteen. Fifty. I don't know if he's interested in the double, but it looks the red's a bit close to the cushion for that. He could possibly do it. Might be looking to get first good safety shot in. Takes him doing that cannon. I think he played the cannon, but it would take a really, really difficult shot. Let's see what. Well, it's a tight frame, and there haven't been too many of those. Frame one was the closest. All the rest, as Dave was saying, have been one to nil by either player. Mark Selby. Well, by his high standards, it was not a particularly good shot at all to put the pink safe. Debatable whether he'll need it at the end of this, but it's just not put Sullivan in any trouble here. Played the snooker behind the, the brown. It's gone too far. And this is not easy. You can see it, but it's not easy. He got so close to it. He needs some help with the blue. And he's got it, and he knows it.
could well have been match over had he left that on. I think he played it pretty well, O'Sullivan there. He didn't have complete control over it, but he wanted to get hit the, the other side of the red, which he managed. Yes, so we had a stroke of good fortune there to make up for the earlier red that he knocked in. Well, we've had a lot of breaks today, but this uh, close frame now is thrilling. Good shot from Selby, a little tap on the table from O'Sullivan. Four points in it. Great touch. Yes, he could afford to play it that way. He hit it off the one cushion. The pink was obviously in the way of him sticking the red. Kind of feels as if this is a deciding frame, doesn't it? Just the tension in there. Yeah, it's actually the longest frame of the whole match, and it's only just coming up to 20 minutes. Yeah, it's been quick, as you can see. It's a very difficult shot to play that he's tried there. With a little left-hand side against the nap of the cloth, you can always catch those thick. Well, I'm not sure Ronnie would have turned that one down, but I understand that he felt that one mistake could have been end of match. <laughs> yeah, the car Stein safety shot, I suppose. It's made difficult by the fact that he's over the top of the black. Well, the off might not be the worst thing. Well, Obviously, so. he's got a long red. Shaping up to get an angle on the black if he knocks this in, but the pot is everything here. One. 
very cleanly done. And you feel the next issue would be just making sure he gets behind the green. There's Brown and the green up the table as they are. Well, it looks pretty Eight. good. He's going to need down to the blue to force a decider. Yes, he, could, he couldn't afford to have too much angle on the green because he couldn't hold for the brown, but I think he's all right there. Thirty. So this blue then, and it looks like we're going all the way to one more frame. Mark Selby has kept his head, stayed on his feet while all the heavy hitting, all the punches were thrown. In it goes. It's some effort, I tell you, to get to five each the way O'Sullivan was playing. But he's done it. And there'll be one more frame to decide who's going into the final. Mark Selby, as so often before, fighting a great rearguard action. So from 5-3 down, he's levelled the match. There's just one more frame to decide who's going through. Mark Selby, 5. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 5. The deciding frame. Little smile between the players. It's been some battle. A great, great match this between two great, great players. Ronnie O'Sullivan led 5-3. Mark Selby has fought back. It's five all. It's all on this. O'Sullivan is ahead on all the stats, but Mark Selby's got one of the biggest hearts in the game, and he's just stayed on his feet, as I said. As you see, the, the total points. I mean, O'Sullivan well over 200 in front, but Selby... As so often before, has just dug deep to get himself into this position in the decider. It would be some victory if he could now come through. They played six deciders before. Selby's won four of them. Well, should be pretty regulation off the left cushion into the bunch. Close to the red, but it does pop. It did, but it's not in.
Yes, and uh, for a while it looked like the keyboard was going to head behind the yellow there on that red, but it hasn't. Of course, it's not an easy shot by any means. point is despite being hammered for a couple of frames Selby didn't lose heart that's the thing he just doesn't go away at times in this match it's One. been a bit like James Bond running through a hail of bullets but not being hit and now he's in in the decider with a chance and he's got the class to finish it off a very good chance. Six. I think someone just moved in his eye line there as he was lining up this one. Might seem a strange thing to say, but I think what's made a difference in that this match was those two re-racks in the fourth frame, because O'Sullivan had made back-to-back -back centuries. He was absolutely buzzing. Selby had been completely shut out. That just took the sting out of the momentum that O'Sullivan had. Obviously, since then, he's played really well. He led 5-3, but if it had been 3-1 up at the interval, he could really have run away with this. But obviously, also, what's made the difference is just Selby. 40. As a person, as a player. The character that he's shown. Twenty one, Good. T seven. Thirty eight. Well, I think it might be red in the middle of the bunch that goes to the right corner, but of course he's got the other two which go in that pocket as well. If he can screw up the table. You see that red in the middle of all of those seems to be available. Got an angle to possibly stun straight across to the right here. There's the red that he might be able to play on at some point. Forty five.
46. Well, there's only two because actually opened up two or three other reds as well. Wow. That has come from nowhere. Mark Selby, 46. And that will hurt him. Too much thinking about the next red, forgot the obvious, the pot. Well, if he loses now, he'll remember that for a long, long time, that black. Black off the spot, unforced error. Yes, strangely enough, O'Sullivan missed one early like that. It was one of the reasons he never made it another century. I think he was on 87 or something. Hit the same part of the pocket. Well, uh, is O'Sullivan still geared up? One. Was he thinking about the defeat that seemed to be coming his way? It seemed hard to think that Selby was going to break down when he did. He hadn't looked like missing in that break. It's going to be tough to take if he does lose now. A match that he looked set to lose earlier this afternoon. Got himself the advantage in the decider, but he's now back in his seat. Six. Well, that's not a very good shot from O'Sullivan. You know, he's got plenty of reds over this side. Just a little tricky one here. He will be below the line of the black. Played it really well. Just the kind of shot that can you can miss if you're really struggling. Are you really under some sort of extra pressure, as he is? It's been a great match, this, isn't it? But this twist, 50. I didn't really see coming when... Selby got in first. Might yet be other twists. I'm already looking at the yellow later on. If you pulled all these reds, getting on it would not be straightforward with the brown covering it to his own pocket. Twenty-three. Thirty-one. Noise there in the arena. It didn't affect O'Sullivan. I think someone dropped something or something. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Well, he's a bit, a little straight on this. Wow, that was, he was trying to make an angle there that just did not exist. Ronnie he was over. determined to play that shot, even though if he'd looked at it, to swing that up for the red, it's just a bit too straight.
It was a little in between. I think he played on the red in the middle, but he's... I wouldn't know which pocket to play in now, middle or down into the top right. Seven. Playing it in the middle takes him down potentially towards playing the brown, which could help him. It's a bit congested, that yellow, brown and black all in a line. We'll give him something to think about. Well, yeah, that's someone shout out. No, OK, he's got the snooker. It's an outrageous fluke. Hit the knuckle of the middle pocket. Well, it, it is now one of those deciders. So Sullivan, happy to be back at the table, but finds himself snookered. This is not nice to hit. Foul, and a miss. Mark Selby, seven. Free ball. And what do you do here? I mean, you could have it put back. It's not a nice snooker to try and hit. Try and be a bit clever here, but O'Sullivan was in enough trouble. He was in enough trouble, O'Sullivan, behind the, the ball he was snookered on. Has to be the right decision, I think, from Selby. Black. You can hear that. Uh, you can hear that. Uh, Mike Kessler is the marker who's helping Greg Coniglio get the balls where they were. Yeah, there's Mike, a fine referee in her own right from Germany. It's just a horrible snooker. The red is just too much in the middle of the table to be easy to hit. I'm not sure it's on. Foul. Oh, no miss. I think... So There's an argument here that the pink is in the way of the natural three cushion angle. He's got to get so close to hitting it. Wow, that was tight. Well, all you well, can say is he seems to have the line. Is it a free ball? Well, it's getting costly, that's for sure. It's 30 in it now, so two more misses. He'd need a snooker himself. He's just getting there. He seems to be learning this angle. It's very, very tight. It's close to the pocket. Oh, my word, it's gone in. Can you believe it? Words fail me. What a thing to happen. What a match. What a decider. What a sport. Yeah, and this, if this goes in and he's on the yellow, then all of a sudden, <coughs> it looks like he'll be favourite. Needs to pot it. Yeah, he needed that. Well, I think all bets are off now as to what's going to happen next, but he's given himself a chance. Five. Yes, he's not quite straight enough on this. He's looking at going all around the table. Well, this is a masterful shot. This really is absolute dynamite. What a touch. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, he was unlucky to be snookered. Obviously, he was lucky to fluke the red, but he's just been one of those deciders, hasn't it? Well, he's walked around the table, I think, just to compose himself. He knows the brown goes. 
He knows where he wants to be. He just doesn't want to rush into any shots. Ten. Four balls left. Sullivan needs them all. To clinch the most thrilling victory imaginable. Well, 14. the way this match has ended is quite something. Pink and black to reach the final. 19. Well, just anywhere straightish. Screw the cue will pass the middle. Goodness me, he's almost straight on this. It's a brave way of playing it under pressure. 25. A memorable match, this. High quality, dramatic. It's come down to the last ball. A truly unbelievable finish. And the match. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan reaches the final here in Belfast as the players conduct their own post-mortem. He would have felt bad, I'm sure, about Fluke in the red. That's what he's like. But he made the clearance under pressure just when it looked like Selby was going to clinch it at the death. Quite extraordinary. What an afternoon of snooker we've seen here at the Waterfront Hall. Ronnie O'Sullivan has finally seen off Mark Selby 6-5 on the final black. What was it like to be involved in? proud of yourself. Yeah, no, I, I, I just enjoyed playing, you know. I just, um, you know, I was gutted really the way I won it, you know, because uh, didn't just, no, you don't want to win a match like that, you know, but I'm pleased I held myself together well. But oh, it wasn't even... Um, I couldn't even say it was pressure, just because when you've got a perspe different perspective on things, I'm just happy to be out there playing, you know, and and, that, and that's, you know, so I wasn't really, I know it sounds crazy, but I was, I was already planning my speech just to say, well done to him, congratulations, you know, keep playing well, it's great to see. You know, I just feel like in a good place with it, really, so it's nice to win, but it's not really, um, you know, I've... <laughs> I don't know what to say. Hey, well, let me ask you this then, because you're very critical of how you play. I mean, you've yeah. got three times. You could have had a, maybe a couple more. You know, it was breathtaking to watch. How do you rate your performance? This oh, no, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, and I thought I played really well. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying, like, you know, that, that hunger and that desire, you know, um, is different now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not a happy loser, but I've also got a perspective on it. And, um, you know, I just enjoy just if I wouldn't have won today I probably I probably would have gone home I probably wouldn't have won a sat through the final having lost a match like that but normally I'm quite happy to to get beaten come and sit in here with you and mm. and just kind of get the mixture right really you know so for me it's, you know because I'm not playing a lot of tournaments I know that within a couple of years I'm probably gonna have to qualify for for like the big events like the world championships and stuff like that so I'm kind of just enjoying these next two years while I'm at the venue and um and just just enjoy it you know just enjoy it for the game and have a bit of fun, win or lose, shouldn't really matter. It does when you're when it's all you do is play snooker, but when you're kind of uh, balancing it with other stuff, you kind of just you just take it for what it is, you know. Yeah, uh, it was okay for us because we were allowed to sit here and watch that last frame and the last couple of minutes of it. Just talk us through what was going through your mind, Ron, because it was um, it was just. I mean, we we thought before the match started it was going to go the distance. Did you? Yeah, well, I'd have, I'd have took going the distance at the beginning because he's the world number one, rightly so. He's the best player. He's when he's missed. I can't believe when he's missed this one. You can't, can't believe can't, you've held this because this red here to get on the blue is not even. Yeah, I can't believe he's missed. Angle, I can't you? believe he's missed that to be honest with you because he's got so much bottle. Yeah, but this but one you're trying to find an angle there. Yeah. That's not pressure. No, that's just no, you're trying no, to force an angle. Honestly, it wasn't like I was just enjoying. I just thought I'm going to try and squeeze it in. I should have probably run it round, but I'm just having a bit of fun out there. You know, it's. It's a different type of pressure. What did you think that when, one? He, when he fluked that? No, I wasn't bothered, honestly. I thought, you know what? I'd already made it in my mind I was going to lose the match. I was thinking if I miss it a couple more times, I can just go and shake his hand because I'd have been 36 behind. I need snookers. And, I and how about that run. one? How about that one? Yeah, no, listen. <laughs> We're going to get you to recreate that later on. on yeah, but as soon as that goes in, I get a bit nervous again. I'm thinking, yeah, oh, said, like, you didn't you know. have an easy brown, did you? You know, uh, in the ground. Yeah, no, it wasn't easy But brown. if you watch this green... This screen that goes off the jaw. <laughs> What's this? And you you walk round the table to compose yourself. This is not easy, yeah, because you've got to play it like you a bit straight on the pink there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. I'd missed the black to be honest. Yeah, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was I was so tight. I just thought, oh, yeah, this could go anywhere. And there you go. You, at the end, when you shook hands, you you spoke to him for quite some time. What were you saying, Ron? Yeah, because Mark's sort of like you know he 
you know, he's always looking to improve his game, you know what I mean? He's uh, one of them guys, and I just think he's such a be better player. You know, I know you hear his interviews that he said, I'm just trying to play the first shot I see. He's he's a much harder player to beat mm. like he is now. I mean, I, I can't play any better, really. Do you know what I mean? And um, so for me, you know, uh, you know, he, he, he should. St I said just stick with it. It's different mm. class, you know, because he's always looking to improve. And, you know, we're, we're always... Ask you know, asking other pros' opinions on what they think we should do and that. So I just thought you know, just just say keep going, mate. He's thirty five. He's he's got a lot of world titles to keep winning. Mm. So yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of Mark's name. Is that one of those bizarre frames you've played in that last one? Not really. I've played in so many. I've been a pro twenty eight years, mate. You know what I mean? If I'd have lost that, I'd have just <laughs> devastated. Just ruined his heart. Why? Why? No, I knew if I would have played the other way, you'd have gone. Yeah, listen. Yeah. That was a bit of a frame. It was. You know no, I mean? but honestly, when your perspective changed, honestly, if I'd have been like knee <laughs> oh, deep no. and going, you know, this is, means everything to me, then I would have been like, yeah, devastated if I'd have lost and super excited if but I won. But to be honest with you, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. I've got two sessions. I like the best of sevens, best of nine. I know, but you, you, you're like feeling thinking, it clearing oh, up no. there because you still love winning. A little bit. Little bit. No. No, seriously. There looked plenty. No, you know, well, honestly, but you've done well. Honestly, you know? I was. It was a different type of pressure. Well, what, yeah. Earlier on, you were down on a shot, and it was like a cameraman or someone got in the way, and you missed First the ball. Strange. And you were what happened there? Yeah, zero tolerance. As soon as they start clicking <laughs> and moving with the camera, it's like, off you go. He's gone. No tripod. No, he did have his tripod, and he was clicking uh, too soon after the shot, so you start mm. to think, well, he doesn't obviously know the etiquette, so he has to go, you know? Otherwise, yeah. otherwise uh, I'll get in trouble for complaining about him, and then I'll get fined, so I just think, you know what? We don't want that. Make my life easier, just yeah. get them all out. You <laughs> just rest up now and uh, get ready for your I'm final? Go, yeah, go to the Italian, sit down, chill yeah. out, get the iPad on and watch... Um, Watch a bit of yeah. bit of uh, this tonight. Should be interesting. Yeah, you had a practice today, first time in. Uh, yeah, since you've been like here. Feeney was on me case. You know, he was like, you know, <laughs> trying out a few balls. I went, Steve, I'm not really that bothered, mate. And he was like, oh, all right. But then I kind of thought, oh, go on and keep. Will you have a practice tomorrow? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Feeney can make me feel guilty enough. Yeah, probably. Well, are you, Ron, you comfortable there? Yeah, kind Good. of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you stay there. Uh, talk us through some of these shots because you were really attacking today. There was a real oh, blend of. Uh, listen, long... that is a sight right shot, isn't it? Because that's the first game. There's argument to play safe there. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not playing safe. I mean, I play safe, but I'm. I'm an attacking player. I don't. I, you yeah, know, but that was that was a few years I've got playing. I want to go out on a, in a bit of glory. Don't Good, I don't be sort of. I, li like... I like this shot. You're 61 in front. If you miss it, you do the game, and you've played on the black. Yeah, right? you'd left yeah, to. Yeah. Is, you know, and this this one here, he refused one, and you just dollied that in. Once that goes yeah. in, you know you're going to win. Another great long shot. I oh, know, but now I'm stretching on the next one. It is all right. You stretch it is, someone. It is what it is. Yeah. I'm just, you know, it's um, it's another day, I suppose. Isn't it? There was a, a moment. Listen, your shot selection is always up there with the best of them. There was a moment you actually made the wrong decision. Did I? I don't know if you're aware of it. Really? There was, there was a three ball plant. I'm sure about that, Andy. That, well, I am sure because <laughs> really? we'll prove it. There was a three ball plant that you refused. All right. This Hold one on. Let here. me let oh, me get in the position. No, 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 no. You should have taken that on. Yeah, you're dreaming, that, mate. Ronnie, that goes I'm, every time. I might be a bit like... Ronnie, that goes let, every let time. me get in the position. That goes nah. every time. Do you want to know how I know that goes every time? Go on, Because Jimmy had a go. Here we yeah, go. It's right when you, you're dead, you get black, about 44 it? attempts on it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> after that, mate. It was. <laughs> it was 44 attempts. So perhaps it was the right decision to refuse it. Mm. There you go. Oh, I, did, I didn't even think of doing it that way. I thought, oh, I just, what, <laughs> Jesus God. Were you, is that what you were looking at? Because Neil wasn't sure yeah, whether was looking, or not you were looking at that. I part. mean, listen, I'm on my swan song. You know what I mean? I'm just going to enjoy it while I'm still, you know, got the world, another two world championships and CD to play. And so I'm just yeah. kind of like trying to just enjoy these next two years while I'm at the venues and, and just have a bit of fun. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, some I've had, a, I've beat myself up enough over the years. So I'm about, I, I owe it to myself to come in and be a bit relaxed. And if I play terrible, who really cares? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That, it doesn't really matter. Does it's it it, it would have done, it would have done years ago. I'd have been really in bits. But now I was, I'm kind of, I don't know, I was kind of looking forward to having a day in here tomorrow and chilling out, you know what I mean? So I'm a little bit, I'm a bit all over the gaff at the moment. My plans have gone awry. <laughs> he was going home early, on. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. I was like, well, shall I stay, shall I go? And I thought, I love it. But Listen. then I kind of think, oh, it's a bad one to lose to yeah. sit here and watch it. Great, you know? mate. It was a great yeah. match. Well, Listen, as much as we want you on the couch, we'd yeah. love to have you out on the table. You know that, Ron. I have to ask you this question, although mm. I think it's one of the most pointless questions. Who do you fancy in the final out of the two that are left? Um, oh, obviously, you've got a fancy Judd. He's obviously been... Um, crashing balls off the lampshades all week yeah. and it? it's like attention all pockets in it when he gets mm. going it's like they can go in from anywhere mate it's uh <laughs> i'll bring me crash helmet in tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> just in case a few fly off the table and hit me on the head <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they'll be flying all over the place make sure health yeah. and safety's all right around here tomorrow <laughs> could be like playing in the ashes <laughs> six <laughs> oh, dear. right mr sullivan we'll let you go and have your italian go have a laugh well,